It's 1810, and Latin America is on the brink of revolution. Behind the scenes, two secret societies, Los Guadalupes and Logia Lautaro, are orchestrating the fight for freedom and plotting huge upheavals that lead to the formations of countries in what we know as North, Central, and South America. Welcome to an episode I've called Two Secret Societies of Latin America Revolution, where we uncover the hidden roles and dramatic impacts of these clandestine groups. Stay with me as we dive into their stories of intrigue, danger, and the pursuit of freedom. Hello, friends, and welcome to the Mysteries of Latin America, where I tell stories of the myths, legends, history, and mysteries that have happened or are still happening everywhere from the northern border of Mexico to the southern tip of Argentina and all across the Caribbean islands. My name is Andrew, and as someone with roots with different parts of Latin America, I think it's important to share these stories so that those of you listening with similar roots know our stories, but also so people who don't share these roots know a little more about what makes up our cultural DNA. Today we're exploring the stealth and covert worlds of Los Guadalupes and Logia Lautaro, two secret societies that played crucial roles in Latin America's quest for independence. From Mexico to Argentina and Chile, these groups shaped the course of history. Join me as we dive into their origins, rise, and influence, and discover how they impacted the fight for freedom. Make sure to subscribe, follow, and share the podcast so you never miss an episode. And when you do subscribe, you'll be able to explore the vault of over 50 stories we've put together there for you. Now to understand the significance of these two secret societies, let's first set the stage. What we would consider the colonial period in different parts of Latin America happened during the period that spans from Columbus's arrival in 1492 to the Bahamas to Peru's independence in 1825, where Spain governed its territories in the Americas through what were called vice royalties, large administrative regions ruled by virreyes, viceroys, representing the king and the interests of the Spanish crown. The two most significant vice royalties were the vice royalty of New Spain, which included present-day Mexico, Central America, the southwestern United States, parts of Louisiana, territories in the Caribbean, parts of Canada, and even the Philippines, and their capital was Mexico City. The vice royalty of Peru covered nine countries in South America, and they were governed from Lima. The viceroy was responsible for enforcing Spanish laws, collecting taxes, and overseeing the economy for Spanish interests, while also maintaining order and suppressing any uprisings. This centralized system ensured that the colonies remained under tight control, but it also bred resentment and a drive for independence among the colonies. First, let's uncover the story of Los Guadalupes. In early 19th century Mexico City, a city bustling with colonial activity, but simmering with discontent, a clandestine group emerged. They were to be called Los Guadalupe, named after the Virgin of Guadalupe, and they were a network of intellectuals, clergymen, and military officers dedicated to the cause of independence. They grew out of short-lived groups, like the Society for the Equality of Indians, and another group called the Conspiracy of 1808, which aimed to overthrow Spanish rule by building a countrywide network of like-minded revolutionaries to reach that goal. Los Guadalupes operated in utmost secrecy, using coded messages and clandestine meetings to spread revolutionary ideas and mobilize support. They used ciphers and codes in their correspondence to other members, usually embedded in ordinary-looking messages, and had trusted couriers who they could rely on to deliver them without betraying their cause. They also covertly printed pamphlets and flyers, the social media of the day and shared them with everyone in their personal networks to promote the cause, always with the risk of being jailed or executed if they were discovered. Their influence extended to the highest levels of society, infiltrating the colonial government and military, and they also provided crucial logistical support, resources, and intelligence to revolutionary leaders, such as Miguel Hidalgo, Jose Maria Morelos, and Vicente Guerrero, some of Mexico's revolutionary founding fathers. They held their secret meetings wherever they could hide themselves from prying eyes and ears. Private homes, churches, convents, and secluded areas far away from the city so they could plot in secret. But the story of Los Guadalupes isn't without its twists and turns. 
their covert operations and high-stakes espionage often placed them on the knife edge of discovery and betrayal. One wrong move could have meant death to the whole group. And it almost happened, as there was a betrayal within their ranks that almost brought the whole movement down. You're listening to the Mysteries of Latin America podcast with your host, Andrew Colon. If you're enjoying the mysteries and histories we explore on this podcast, make sure to follow or subscribe wherever you're tuning in. But let's turn our attention south to the lands that would become Argentina and Chile for a moment. Here, the Logia Lautaro was taking shape, founded by South American revolutionaries José de San Martín and Bernardo O'Higgins. They were named after the indigenous Mapuche leader Lautaro, who in the 16th century led a partially successful uprising against Spain, so his name was synonymous with the word resistance. This secret society's sole mission was to liberate South America from Spanish rule. And while not exclusively a group that was part of the Freemasons, the Logia Lautaro operated under Masonic principles, emphasizing secrecy and discipline. The Logia's missions were carried out by orchestrating military campaigns and diplomatic efforts to unite the southern South American territories against Spanish rule. In 1817, founder José San Martín utilized the Logia to plan his daring crossing of the Andes Mountains and secure victories that led to the independence of Argentina, Chile, and Peru. But beginning one year earlier in 1816, legendary South American visionary and leader Simón Bolívar and other members planned the campaign to liberate Peru, leading to the critical battle of Ayacucho in 1824, which decisively ended Spanish colonial rule in South America. The Logia's covert operations and strategic alliances were instrumental in the success of these independence movements across the continent. Simón Bolívar, who was originally from Caracas, Venezuela, received essential support and strategic guidance from the Logia Lautaro for his campaigns across Venezuela, Colombia, Ecuador, Peru, and Bolivia, which would later bear his name. But internal conflicts and external threats, however, constantly loomed over the Logia Lautaro, culminating in a daring rescue mission during the Siege of Lima that nearly ended in disaster. We'll tell you about that in a moment, but let's go back to Los Guadalupes for just a moment. Despite their meticulous planning and influence, and just like the Logia Lautaro, internal betrayals and high-stakes espionage put them at risk of discovery. In 1811, a member's betrayal exposed several of their operatives, threatening the entire movement. That year, their network faced a severe setback when a member, who was also a high-ranking officer in the Spanish colonial army and who was covertly aiding the secret society, was discovered and executed. His capture led to the exposure of several other covert operatives and almost exposed the whole group, which would have dealt a severe blow to the cause of independence. Despite this tragedy, the society's resolve remained unshaken. Their foundational work played a crucial role in the independence movement, even as Spanish authorities increased their pressure. Meanwhile, at the Logia Lautaro, their resilience was on full display in 1817 during the Siege of Lima, where José de San Martín orchestrated an extremely high-risk operation to free imprisoned key revolutionary figures held by Spanish forces in Chile. Despite the unexpected arrival of additional Spanish troops, San Martín's meticulously timed crossing of the Andes Mountains allowed him to outmaneuver the enemy and seize strategic positions, attack the Spanish prisons, and free the political prisoners who had been detained by the Spanish authorities. This daring operation not only rescued the revolutionaries, but also set the stage for later victories that were pivotal in securing Chile's independence from Spanish rule. These acts of bravery and strategic brilliance were instrumental in their fight for independence and couldn't have taken place without the information and coordination from the Logia Lautaro. As the Mexican War of Independence waged on, Los Guadalupes faced mounting challenges. Many members were captured or forced into hiding, and their influence began to wane. Nevertheless, their contributions were pivotal in laying the groundwork for the revolution. 
Similarly, the Logia Lautaro's role diminished as the independence moved near its end in South America. Infighting and a new political landscape led to its dissolution, but its impact on the liberation of Argentina, Chile, and Peru was undeniable. And even though the Logia Lautaro dissolved by the early 1820s, its influence persisted through its strategic vision and organizational methods, which greatly inspired Simón Bolívar and other revolutionary leaders to keep going. The principles of the Logia Lautaro, including the emphasis on coordinated military strategy and the importance of secretive, committed revolutionary networks, were reflected in Bolívar's efforts to liberate Bolivia, Venezuela, Colombia, Ecuador, and Peru from Spanish rule. That meant that the legacy of the Logia Lautaro lived on, shaping the broader struggle for independence across the continent. Were there other secret societies during this period? Yes, oh, there were many. And while there were groups like the mysterious Rosicrucian Order and the Secret Society of the Andes that played important roles, they had a more limited impact compared to Los Guadalupes and Logia Lautaro. The stories of these societies with their secrecy, strategic influence, and historical significance now hold a special place in the mysteries of Latin America, and they join over 50 other stories that occupy our vault of episodes ready for you to enjoy. And no, you don't have to buy anything to have access to them. It might be a good idea to subscribe, share, or follow the podcast, though, depending on how you're getting it, but the content is free, and I'll work to always keep it that way. So what's next? Will we uncover more historical mysteries in the Caribbean islands, delve into extraterrestrials landing in Brazil, or explore unsolved disappearances in Mexico? Find out on our next episode. I'm working on it right now, and that one is going to be good. Friends, I thank you for listening and watching if you're catching this on YouTube, and I send you a warm gracias from the Mexican Caribbean. I'm Andrew Colon. Adios. We appreciate you for tuning in to Uncover the Mysteries of Latin America. Don't forget to subscribe to stay updated on our latest episodes and share with fellow enthusiasts of history and legends. Thank you.